Okay, so what I always like to keep track of in the market are the indexes. So the indexes is the S&P 500, the NASDAQ. These are the major ones, the Dow Jones and the RUT, which is the Russell 2000, which are the smaller companies. Um, and so these are daily charts for each of them. So for the SPX, what is that all I always look at? I tell everyone to do this. If there's one thing you're paying attention to when you're charting is RSI. So RSI kind of, in the simplest way is it, it um, monitors how overbought or oversold something is. And so when you look at all these indexes, mostly on the daily, I mean outside of, of the Russell 2000. So on the SPY, which is this chart, we're at, what's this line at? This line's at 70, we're at like 75. So technically right now, the SPY, Right now, for the SPX, we're in overbought territory. So what that tells me is it could go up some more, but in the short term, say the next week or two, there's a possibility for a little pullback. So typically when the SPY pulls back, you know, those stocks within the SPY, which are like Apple, are going to pull back, and oftentimes people get scared and start selling out of their other positions. When you look at the... Um, the NASDAQ, which is on this chart right here, same thing, like we're right on the verge of overbought. So I could definitely see this going up a little bit more, mostly because it just broke out. Um, it just broke out of a high, which was back here in the middle of February. So that probably tells me that there might be a little bit of momentum here. Um, and so that could definitely go up a little bit more, but still we're really close to that overbought, which basically probably means that we're gonna have a little short pullback sometime soon. Russell 2000, um, this hasn't really been moving just because all the speculative stocks in the, in the market, smaller caps, smaller companies, haven't been performing that well recently. The Apples, the Facebooks of the world have been performing well, but not the, some of the smaller names. So that's why this really hasn't broken out yet. But on the RSI, it looks pretty healthy. And so that could definitely see a little run up, potentially break out of this top, much like right over here did for the NASDAQ. And then last is the Dow Jones. This has some pretty crazy runs lately. Um, kind of a late bloomer in the market compared to the S&P 500 or NASDAQ. But right again, we haven't broke out of the recent highs, which was, looks like a month ago. But RSI is in a pretty relatively healthy spot. 57, where overbought territory is around 70 on that indicator. So that's a that's a really quick um, over overview of those. And then on the next break, I'll, I'll I'll break down the charts a little bit more and seeing technically what we're seeing and where potential pullbacks might be over the next couple weeks. Yeah. Also, I'm crazy far away from you. Beautiful. Beautiful. So I'll, we'll explain way. Russell. 2000, 5000, you know, all the acronyms here. You got dinosaurs in the game? Explain that a little more in depth as we, we proceed. Bro, I haven't been. I've been playing a couple of As soon weeks, as this dinosaur so gets away from me. I don't me. know what weird crap they be putting in the game. I figured. I'll try to get over to you as quickly as I can. What the? But while I'm running over you, and doing nothing, to break down, it's so the S&P 500 is the top 500 shit. companies Yeah. based on value. Not actually, I wouldn't say about based on valuation, but people can put whatever stocks they want the people who created SPY which is Are you good that um is the S&P 500 ETF that you can invest in so ETFs are basically funds that people create that they put multiple stocks in and then you invest in what these people say are stocks to own essentially or are stocks that kind of mimic the market flows in terms of going up or down S&P yeah yep and so in the S&P 500, some of the major companies that make up that index are things like Apple, Facebook, Google. They added Tesla recently. Um, a lot of the banks, so like JP Morgan, things like that. These are ex exchange so traded kind of based funds. Based on how they're performing, is kind of how that index is going to perform. Yeah. Um, and then for the NASDAQ are the top technology companies. So again, kind of like the SPY or SPX, same thing. Um, Companies like Facebook, Google, um, I'm trying to think of some other bigger ones, uh, IBM, uh, a couple other of the big names that you can think of who are tech companies in the space. 
Ah, shoot, there's a dude right next to me. I'm gonna hide. I'm dead. He did not hit me, bro. Oh my gosh. These fools did not hit me. Three of them. This bro did not hit me. My game must have lagged because I dodged that shot. Anyway, after I was so really interrupted by this trio. <laughs> oh, you're up on the mountain tab. Take a sip of water real quick. Yeah, watch out, dude. That's not the guy Fools hitting either. more so than one. Life. Okay. Got yeah. the homie rolling up. Okay, I see purple. Rip. <laughs> oh, well. I'll uh, I'll go back to what I was just doing. Oh, yeah, charging some down. stocks. That is comedy. Uh, but yeah, so the Nasdaq are technology stocks, and the Russell 2000 are smaller companies, um, but are are popular. Maybe they don't have as much growth, or maybe they've kind of plateaued somewhat in in sell. I know I think there's a lot of oil and gas in there, and some just kind of like a plethora of all the different. Um, the different sectors and then the last one is the dow jones and that's kind of i think the traditional ones i don't really trade dow jones at all but i think banks are in there and a lot of oil and gas kind of some of them industrial yeah kind of those things are do you know if banks are in the dow i don't remember anyway don't really matter so let's go to whenever you let me know when you switch over to the the do that so let's go to the spy chart first which is the s p 500 so this is on the daily chart so like i said oh let's not do spy actually let's do spx so sp yep yep at one point So SPX, like we said, it's pretty close to that overbought tor territory. Or it's actually, I set this chart to a different. This is 75. So technically, it's above that 70 level. So it's technically an overbought territory. But let's zoom this out if I can. What you'll see in the past is it can go up above the overbought territory and oftentimes just hang out there for a little bit. Let me go to the spy and see what we're around spy. Because I think it even, I know it's about the same on RSI. Um, RSI is just kind of, it's monitoring how overbought or, or, un, or oversold something is. And so obviously see these big peaks and you see these valleys, I guess, coming down and then going back up. But I would say, let's look recently. So as we can see, there's been a few times where it's gone to this overbought ish territory. So back here had a big pullback kind of huddled around here while it was trending upwards and then which is really weird it actually went up and still kind of went down but now we're heading towards that overbought territory again and so when we when we come in a little bit closer here more recently let's keep some of these levels in here so one thing you always want to do it when you're charting is you want to put trend lines which are support or resistance marks so a resistance is a place that is trying to break through a support on the upside a support is where it would break through on the downside and so these are support lines there is no resistance because it's at an all-time high but let's just put some... oh yeah I'll get yeah so this is yeah when when COVID first came people started freaking out um, that's where the big drop is. So as you can see, like it was overbought for a while, which the market needed to pull back, but COVID just kind of plummeted it. And then it was oversold. So this, if I look back, what it would have made sense is probably buying down here. Obviously there's a lot of good things on sale, but it was a scary time to purchase in the market. So uh, I didn't, I didn't make buys that low. But uh, as we look here, so let's put some trend lines. So these are the two trend lines that I'll put so these are kind of showing an uptrend. And so you basically find a bottom of a candle and then you find another bottom of a candle and kind of put a line out for those. So we can see is we broke below this one and then we created, I think this is on a different time point, but we have kind of created a second trend line here. And so right now 
We broke through one trend line, but now we've created a second trend line. So now it's between these two trend lines. So if we break back above this and start hovering more, we can probably keep going higher. But if we come down and test this and break below, this is where we want to look for support lines. So you see right here, there's a lot of kind of consolidation. So this is where a lot of people started buying in this consolidation area. So if it breaks below here, you're going to want to look for a little small back, a small pullback here, which is around the 4,900 mark or 4,090 mark. And obviously if it breaks down, if it comes to here and pops back off, then it's going to bounce off that support. But if it breaks that support, you want to look for the next support line, which is about right here. And how we monitor that, we just look at where before these lines are. There's a lot of traffic here, a lot of, a lot of consolidation here. So that could be potentially a second place for it to pull back to. And so I would say just keep a track. Just if you have any graphs that you can put little marks on, just put some marks like this on your graph and keep this as an indicator. If it breaks below, you probably want, don't want to do any buying over the next couple of weeks. Um, but if it stays above it and it bounces off, and what I mean bounce off is it hits that support line and then keeps going back up, then you could punch, potentially have a point to either buy more stock or buy some stock for the first time um and so that's just a quick little a little a little summary on the spx going into next week